What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another movie haul video. If you guys are fans of physical media, if this is the first time that you guys are here, I do love to collect physical media, whether I'm watching it for the first time with you guys for the channel or I'm watching it offline. I pick these movies out. I love movies as a whole, and I pick these out for certain reasons. So I'll let you guys know why I picked them out, how much I got them for, where I got them from, who I got them from. I'll give you guys all the details, but before we get into it, please, if you guys do love physical media if you guys are collectors or if you guys are just fans of movies in general please hit that big thumbs up and consider subscribing today to support the channel it does go a long way we're doing great here we have a fantastic community all the links are down in the description below for more information okay so i've divided these up as i usually do if you guys have seen my videos you guys know how i do it my dvd pickups then my Blu-ray pickups, and then my 4K pickups if I have them. And this time I have some 4K pickups. Some of them were gifted because I had a birthday recently earlier this month. So we'll just get into some of my DVD pickups first, starting off with a double pack, Raising Arizona and Fargo. Now, I could have sworn I might have seen on television when I was a kid, Raising Arizona. I don't remember it at all. I believe this is a Coen Brother double pack. Yeah, it is actually. And Fargo... Same thing. I believe I saw it when I was very, very young, and I don't really remember grasping the concept of this film, so I'll have to watch it, possibly for the first time on the channel. So you guys let me know what is your excitement level for me checking out Fargo. Please let me know in the comments below. Up next is one that is a remake, but I heard that this remake is better than the original. You guys let me know. I know the original was done by Wes Craven, but I'm talking about The Hills Have Eyes Unrated. I believe this is 2006. Okay, yeah, early 2000s, guys, were the year for remakes. We know kicking it off with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, House of Wax, all of these type of movies that were just, I think, pretty gory. Uh, well, at least they could have been gory, but the remakes always pushed the boundaries. The Omen was also 2006, so there was a lot more gore that you can kind of push in there for a teenage, you know, late teen audience, and I think these were selling like crazy when they hit theaters, so The Hills Have Eyes. I heard this was an extremely gory film. I've only heard people talk about it on podcast, and when they're just describing some of the kills and some of the situations, I'm like, I have to see this. And it is the unrated version, and every time I see this, I always pass up on it like, I have to watch this one of these days, one of these late nights, and I think I'm going to do it for the channel. All right, now next up, believe it or not, you guys will probably not believe this. I have seen a lot of Eddie Murphy's older films. I've never seen Trading Places. Another one that always I would see in the thrift store. I know there's numerous copies, Blu-ray, 4K, all that good stuff, but it's going to be a first-time watch for me. And Eddie Murphy, man, uh, Dan Aykroyd as well, and it looks like a young Jamie Lee Curtis, I believe. Yeah, so uh, uh, I don't know a thing about this movie at all whatsoever, and um, I just hope it's a good comedy. I always hear people talk about, you know, have you seen this movie? Do you plan on watching this movie? Now I can finally do it. That's definitely one for the channel. Uh, now, here's one that I've only seen on TV. Maybe Comedy Central, I believe, used to play us all the time as a kid. I don't remember really what the story is, but I remember that... Uh, they used to always play it on TV, and I used to love these hairstyles, man. I'm talking about BAPS, um, which stands for Black American Princesses. <laughs> love that acronym, man. Uh, let me know if you guys have seen BAPS. Like I said, I don't know much about the story. I know it has Halle Berry right there, and then Martin Landau. Yes, yes, the iconic Martin Landau. You guys let me know if you guys have seen uh, this movie, BAPS. Uh, I don't know much. I don't even remember when it came out, to be honest. Uh, maybe mid-90s? I don't really remember, but um, yeah, you guys let me know. Babs, have you heard of it? What did you guys think about it? Now, next up was actually one that was gifted to me on my birthday from my mom. Shouts out to my mom. Love her to death. I did have one of these movies, though. It is a three-pack Midnight Munchies pack. Love that. So it's a Cheech and Chong triple pack. So Cheech and Chong's next movie, which I actually did not have. I believe that's their next movie uh, after it's still um up in smoke i'm sorry born in east la i do have the shout factory release uh that's a classic that i grew up on uh i watched that movie so many times like 
at least once a year, I, at least once a year. If you guys have not seen Cheech and Chong in Born East LA, what are you doing? Like it's, it's, it's peak nineties comedy, especially from a Latin actor like, um, Cheech Marin, uh, especially the solo stuff. I mean, he was known for all the Cheech and Chong stuff. So to see him be solo in not only this, but a lot of other movies, you know, along his career and whatnot, I thought it was extremely funny. It was very, very relatable. You know, I live over here near LA, so it's a very relatable situation. You know, I'm also Mexican American as well so a lot of the jokes landed for me uh and then you have Cheech and Chong get out of my room which I have no clue what that is <laughs> but I know these guys were doing a lot of movies back in the day so you guys let me know this is a midnight munchies pack once again I don't smoke but Hey, I had to get a, a a gummy edible or something like that. Uh, uh, pop this movie in. Uh, all right, now next up. So I recently watched When Harry Met Sally and everyone was like, have you seen uh, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan in Sleepless in Seattle? And I said, no, I have not. And luckily I found this DVD in pretty good condition at my thrift store recently. So I would love to see this one. I don't know who else is all in it. Actually, is that Rosie O'Donnell? I believe it is. Rosie is in this movie. Let me know if you guys have seen when was the first time you have seen Sleepless in Seattle. Is it a good one? How does it compare to when Harry met Sally? I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. Uh, now another one, uh, this, this one, I had never seen in a thrift store. Maybe since you guys have. I always heard about it. And I've been, you know what, been meaning to watch a lot, a lot of Matthew Lillard films. All right. I'm talking about SLC Punk. Never seen it. But I've seen a lot of this guy's movies. I don't even know when this came out, to be honest. Uh, it just seems like a... I read this in 1999. So, turn of the century, man. I... You know, I've talked about him a lot on the channel. I know he's a goofy guy and whatnot. People were talking about this one like it was very similar to Train Spotting, possibly. Just about the punker lifestyle in Utah, I believe, which is very, it's still very Mormon. Um, so, you know, antics like his, I'm sure, are, are, are being demonized and scrutinized and stuff like that. And, and punkers ain't, you know, uh, going over that well in Utah, I'm sure. Probably to this day. And this takes place in 85, 1985. So, and his name is Steve-O. That's funny. SLC Punk, you guys, let me know your thoughts on that one. Also, uh, another one that uh, I remember as a kid uh, seeing this poster or seeing the VHS. It's 1986's Short Circuit. Never seen this movie, believe it or not. And I believe there's even a Short Circuit too. But... I've never seen this movie, even on TV, I never saw it, but I know it's about an android. Um, I could see based on that picture in the back. <laughs> I don't know too much, but I know that has Ali uh, Shetty, Steve Gutenberg. Um, I know there was a fascination, man, in the in the 80s and 90s with these kind of characters and whatnot. And um, yeah, short circuit. You guys let me know your thoughts. I can't speak on it. I don't know anything about it. Uh, next up is another Tom Hanks pick with Shelley Long. It is Steven Spielberg presents The Money Pit. All right, so we got a Steven Spielberg film here. I've never even heard of this movie. You guys are some of you, like, blasphemy. I have seen The Burbs. I have seen... Oh, my God. Actually, I have not seen a lot of Tom, Tom Hanks. I still have to watch Splash, which I believe he's in. I still have to watch Big. Um, but I've seen this one. I have not seen the one where I believe it's like a college film that he's in called The Bachelor or Bachelor Party or something like that. There's a lot. But I didn't know that this movie, I, 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 I believe I might have come across this cover, but I didn't know that it was Steven Spielberg. Uh, but this is probably like a mid-80s movie. 1986. Okay. And I don't know what it's about. But usually a money pit refers to something where you just keep putting money and it looks like there is a house in the background. I can only assume that they're trying to maybe fix their upper, a house that just keeps failing on them. I don't know. You guys let me know. It's the best way I like to go in these movies, not knowing the thing, so you guys can get my reaction first time. All right, now next up, guys, uh, I believe this is a 60s film, early 60s, 1962. We're talking about Frank Sinatra, Lawrence Harvey, and Janet Leigh in... The Manchurian Candidate. Now, I have to look this one up because I believe there's a, a couple of remakes for this film. But this is the OG. This is the one that a lot of people talk about being pretty wild. I want to check this out. It has a high percentage on Rotten Tomatoes. You guys let me know. Manchurian Candidate. I don't know much about it. I did read the synopsis and it seems like a pretty good thriller. Also, haven't seen many movies with Frank Sinatra. So, that's it for my DVD picks, guys. 
whether from the thrift store or gifted. Now, next up are my Blu-ray picks. Now, this one is an Amazon pick because I wanted to talk about this. I do have a horror podcast with my buddy Q Reviews, so shouts out Q Reviews called Why Won't You Die? A Horror Podcast. Please check it out. I'll put the links down in the description below. But I did order this one because we were talking about it recently, and I'm like, you know what? I have not I don't even have this in my collection, so I wanted to rewatch it so we can talk about it on the pod. Uh, it is The Faculty, Robert Rodriguez, which is actually getting a remake, if you can believe it or not. I always thought that this was such a niche, uh, not niche, but like maybe not spoken about. So this came out around Urban Legend, Scream. I know what you did last summer. But it wasn't a slasher movie. Like, it wasn't your typical slasher movie. It was an alien sci-fi movie. And I think that's maybe where people were like, nah, this is a little bit too far-fetched. I mean, isn't any movie, really? But I don't know. A lot of people either loved it or they hated it. I remember really liking this movie. Also, they showed it all the time on TV. Uh, it'll be fun rewatching it. It is from 1998. Robert Rodriguez, like I said, I think he did a pretty good creature feature with this one. Josh um, Hartnett. Um, also, Usher. Uh, Elijah Wood. Uh, I forget some of the other actresses' name uh, in this. Famke Jansen is in it. I believe she plays a teacher. Clea Duvall, that's who it is, yeah. Uh, Jordana Brewster. Uh, great cast. I mean, great uh, team cast for, for the time, for sure. All right, now the next one up, guys, is a, a, a Blu-ray triple pack that was gifted to me. And I believe he wants me to watch this on my Patreon. So I will be watching them for my Patreon. I'm looking at the picture in the back. It's alive. The trilogy. So it's alive, it lives again, an island of the alive. All right. And the reason why I'm laughing is because of this right there. <laughs> guys, what are you doing to me? If you guys want to see me squirm and just uh, face palm it to movies that you like, please join the Patreon. I'll leave it in the description below. You guys can uh, pick the movies. A couple of movies that I watch each month. All right. So this one is... I don't know. Uh, Killer Baby. I really didn't even read any of the synopsis, but this was gifted. I think we actually did see the first trailer for um, the first film. It's alive. And um, it, it didn't really show much, but I'm looking at the baby in the back and I'm guessing that's what the sequels have or that's what the baby ends up looking like. Mega Mind, I guess. Uh, so you guys let me know. It's alive. Have you guys seen it? Either the trilogy or the original, whatever. Uh, also gifted. That was gifted to me by Jason, by the way. These next couple movies are gifted by Jason. So shouts out to him, an awesome Flix Talk family member. Uh, next up, he did gift me the Shout Factory Collector's Edition for Charles Bronson, 10 to Midnight. Now, I didn't even read what this is about, but... Um, I've seen Death Wish now at this point. I do plan to watch a couple of the sequels for the channel. And I like him as this cop role. I don't care what he's in. He was born for this. I know he did a lot of Westerns, too, I believe, uh, back in the day. But he has that look. He definitely had that look. And uh, I don't know anything about this movie. I didn't, I didn't see much much about it as far as like a like a, a trailer or information or anything like that but you guys let me know if that one's good 10 to midnight all right now next up also a gift from jason is the sentinel let me know if you guys have heard this one i don't have much to say about it because i don't know much about it uh this one i believe is a 70s movie though i could be wrong 1977 okay and it and it also has a uh, um a quote on the back that says one of the best horror films of the 70s Okay, you better be saying one, because The Exorcist is the best horror film of the 70s. Um, I mean, there might be a couple other ones in there. Texas Chainsaw? You guys let me know uh, your thoughts on that comment, by the way. Is this one really, really good? The Sentinel. All right. Now, next up is actually a, uh, a pickup that I got recently that I found at a thrift store. Actually, these next... Let me actually lump these in because these next couple of picks, I was like, oh my gosh, uh, these are some good picks. And they were all kind of lumped in together. So Nosferatus is getting a remake this year, I believe, with a Bill Skarsgård. But I didn't know that besides the, you know, the 1922, I believe, or 23 original black and white, that there was a 70s version, Nosferatu, the vampire. And that's the one that I picked up and I looked it up and I looked on the back and it is a Scream Shout Factory release. And I'm like, yo, for a couple of bucks, four dollars, I'm picking this up. Uh, it did get a high percentage. I believe it's all in German. I could be wrong about that. There might be a English dub version. I said, oh, here we go. German language version with English subtitles. I like to watch it in its original form. That's how I'll be watching it. But it is PG kind of. Nah. 
Okay. I mean, I've seen good PG movies. I just recently watched Red Dog, and that's PG, and it made me ball, and I thought it was fantastic. I gave it a really high score. But this one here, let me know if you guys have seen Nosferatu, The Vampire, and if it's a good one or not. Okay. I do plan on watching the original, by the way, the original Black and White, which is not even that long. I think it's like an hour long, hour and ten, something like that. Uh, the next one up, guys, I do like Rob Zombie. For the most part, there's a lot of movies that I don't like of his, okay? So that being said, I do have The Devil's Rejects. I don't know if it's an unrated version. These are all... Two of them are unrated. The third one is not. It's a triple Blu-ray pack. I don't know who gave this away, but damn. Uh, uh, why did you buy it if you're going to give it away? It's a pretty new one, too. The Rob Zombie Trilogy for um, House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, and Three from Hell. They have to call this something. Like, something tr the Something Trilogy. I don't know. They should call it something. But um, so I will let you know. House of a Thousand Corpses. I really didn't enjoy that movie. I know it's grotesque and stuff like that. I thought it was wild. I thought it was bizarre. I thought it was a great way to, in to introduce people to these uh, Rob Zombie uh, characters and the style that he puts out there for himself. You know, I really do like 31 and like some of these other movies that he's put out. A lot of people don't like them. OK, I totally get it. I even liked his version of Halloween. Uh, Halloween 2. Not so much. All right. So the Devil's Rejects in here is my favorite out of the three. Okay. There's something about it. There, there's there's a not a stylistic choice, but there's a focus on the three characters. I don't want to give too much away. And the soundtrack is fantastic. The ending is amazing. There's something about the the second one, man. That just it, it has a lot of longe longevity for me where i can keep re-watching this movie over and over again despite its horrific nature it feels very real that's another thing too is it feel it feels very real of a psychopathic trio now three from hell <laughs> where did they drop the ball with this third movie and, and you know sequels are hard to do but you did Devil's Rejects, and that was really good. But Three from Hell focuses on all the same characters, with a couple addition to new characters, I believe. Uh, not Trejo, but I, I, maybe Trejo's in that third one. Um, but it... I was, it was so weird. My buddy and I went to go see it in theaters. We were not satisfied when we walked out. We're like, can we agree that that was the worst one? And it definitely was. So Three from Hell... The whole, the three pack, the Rob Zombie trilogy is what they're calling it. I got it for $4 and I think I only have the Devil's Rejects on Blu-ray. That's okay. I'll watch these movies again, especially House of a Thousand Corpses. I think that one's really gritty. I would love to talk about it on my horror podcast once again. All right, now next up is a simple upgrade because I did have this on DVD. A lot of you guys want me to watch this one too. And I ordered it specifically because it was only like five, six bucks um, for you guys. Because I like to watch these movies in, in some pretty good quality format. It is Porky's. Uh, a lot of people want me to watch this with my fiance. I don't know why. I'm going to get... I'm going to get her to watch it with me, okay? Even if it takes a while, I'm going to get her to watch it with me. But uh, I don't know what this is about. I think it's just a raunchy film. But Porky's, let me know. Are you guys excited for me to check that one out? There we go. It's a brand new one from Amazon. Also a brand new Amazon pick because um, I really like these guys. I grew up on these guys. And for some reason, I never uh, watched this movie. I, I remember they used to show it all the time on Comedy Central. And I actually found a DVD copy of it maybe last year. And then it went down in price like to $6 on Blu-ray. And I'm like, I'll upgrade so I can watch it for the channel. It is Basketball. And that's the uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, uh, the creators of South Park. So I'm expecting a lot of just raunchiness uh, in this movie. It also has Jenny McCarthy right there in the middle. Uh, love her. Had a huge crush on her back in the 90s, obviously. And um, I don't know much about this movie. I believe people were saying that they combined a sport or they create their own sport. I mean, Basketball. Baseball, basketball. Okay, there, I answered my own question. Um, and I'm guessing it becomes a sensation. It looks like they have a huge crowd. But basketball, you guys let me know. Uh, is it a fun one? I'm sure it'll be a fun, raunch raunchy time. Uh, now, next up, I could have sworn I had this. So if I did talk about this in an old video, uh, forgive me. I don't have the a lot of these newer uh, pickups cataloged at all. It is Kurt Russell in Walt Disney's Miracle. Never even... Uh, uh, I don't think I even heard of this when it came out to be honest uh, i believe it's an inspirational sports story um based on his haircut there kurt russell it looks like a 70s film it just looks like a 70s style haircut and, and outfit that he has on but miracle don't know much about it but um i love kurt russell i absolutely do love kurt russell pretty much in everything he's in 
Uh, let's see. Next one was a complete blind buy. I looked it up, had a low percentage. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get it anyways. Uh, because the star power is crazy. Chris, uh, Evans, Dakota Fanning, Camilla Bell, and Jimun Hansu. It is push. All right. I don't even remember this movie when it came out. I don't remember hearing anything about it. You guys let me know. I mean, maybe that's a bad sign, but, um, I do like, uh, I do like Chris Evans a lot. Uh, I do like Dakota Fanning and Jimun Hansu. I don't know the other girl, Camilla Bell. But you guys let me know. Is it a good action film? I believe it's like has to do with superpowers or something like that. So that's it for my Blu-ray pickups, guys. Now, next up is a little short stack of films that are in the 4K format. Now, this one was gifted to me by my moderator, Big Rob. So shouts out, Big Rob. Thank you so much, my friend. For my birthday, he gifted me the beautiful, and this slipcover has to be one of my favorites for this year. Of, I believe it came out this year, of the Avatar re-release. Uh, because they did come out with this in 4K, I believe, last year, but the cover was different. Or this could be the original. I don't really I don't really remember, but uh, this one I like the most as far as the slipcover. So this is the original Avatar. I only owed it, uh, owned it in the original Blu-ray format. Now I can watch it in 4K. Last year I bought a 4K OLED TV. Finally, I upgraded. A lot of you guys were like, what kind of TV do you have? What kind of TV do you have? And I was like so embarrassed to say that I had a like 4K UHD, like a very bottom of the bin uh, 4K. Uh, but we upgraded finally so I can enjoy these movies in a, a um, you know full 4K quality HDR, Dolby Vision and all that good stuff. Avatar, man. Can't say uh, much about it. I still have not seen the second one because the fandom kind of died down for me. But once I rewatch this one, I'm sure I will get back into the fandom. So Way of the Water will be like, boom, boom. I want to throw that on right away. Uh, next up was also a gift for my birthday. Uh, it was actually an upgrade because I do own the Blu-ray. But my mom got it for me. It is Dawn of the Dead, the 2004 Zack Schneider. Now, I talked about this before. That this is one of my favorite remakes okay it's very hard to make a remake and make it stick i mean this one dread uh night of the living dead uh the 1990 romero uh, i'm sorry um uh tom savini ver version you know they're, they're very very hard to do with the remake okay Zack snyder nailed it uh this might have been the first Zack snyder film i saw before 300 i believe this came out right before 300 uh but you guys let me know your thoughts on dawn of the dead i have not seen what this looks like in 4k yet so i'm very very excited to see it hopefully it's very very good next up was also a gift from my mother uh i told her about my we went to go see this in theaters and this is probably the last superhero movie that i saw in theaters and i was like i'm done like just just because the superhero genre has been beaten to death and i could do without it for a couple of years though this movie was very very satisfactory uh it was a little different because um not only are we dealing with the Latin family here, but but some of the villains and some of the uh, um, surrounding areas were a little different than your typical DC film. So I'm talking about Blue Beetle. This one actually surprised me. I, I thought this was going to be a lot worse than what it was. The suit is amazing. This suit looks crazy. And I can only imagine how it's going to look when I rewatch this in 4K. Um, but it was such a fun, enjoyable watch. The soundtrack was really good. Uh, Zolo, his performances as Blue Beetle, uh, I, it didn't even surprise me because I knew he would do well. I watched him in Cobra Kai and I'm like, this kid's a good actor. Also, it had um, the, the villain was a little lacking. That's the only thing I can say, which was, um, I forget what her name is. Uh, Saran Susan, is it Susan Sarandon? Yeah, Susan Sarandon in as the villain is just kind of your typical like uh you know money hungry villain and a very very cookie cutter but but with the comic relief from like george lopez and some of the surrounding family it made it such an enjoyable watch once again maybe because i'm mexican-american and they're i believe puerto rican maybe maybe no actually they are mexican I'm I'm oh, I'm so sorry. I think they are Mexican. They're just like living in a a place that looks like Florida. I always associate like Florida with Puerto Rico, California with Mexicans. That that, that, that I always just associate that. But I forgot Mexicans travel everywhere. They're all over the globe now. So uh, I believe it's a Mexican family. Uh, it was very relatable content, and it was it was just the action was just really good for me. And once again, the suit was pretty cool. Um, I enjoyed it. I had a very good enjoyable time. So I'm glad I own that. Now next up. The last two 4Ks, oh man, 
It was like the end of our Goodwill hunting day. And I was like, oh, I'm getting tired. Like, let's go. So Laura went to go. My my fiance went to go uh, uh, look for some clothes and whatnot. And I kind of just randomly walked in there. And before they even put these movies on the shelf, they were in a cart. And they were covered by a bunch of things. So I saw a little hint, a little sliver of a slipcase. And I'm like... What is that? I move the items and I see two 4Ks right there for a couple of dollars. Okay. Now, the first 4K right here is a three pack, a three movie pack. It's the Peanuts Holiday Collection. Okay. Now, I know that may not be magical to some, but I did see uh, this um, Thanksgiving one recently. I did a reaction for it, and it was very sweet. It was very lighthearted, and I can't wait to watch the uh, Great Pumpkin charlie brown and a charlie brown christmas uh coming up this christmas or yeah this christmas god it's already hard to think about christmas we just celebrated it i feel like um for 2023 uh but now i have them i don't really own any cartoon well i have ca cartoons in 4k but I, I don't really know if i even notice a difference i'm not a big cartoon watcher uh but they're very short like 25 30 minutes each and uh, i was like wow i want to just add that to the collection just because and the next pickup which I looked this up, and this is kind of a rare find. Like, it's going for $60 on eBay. It is Labyrinth, the 35th anniversary 4K. And I thought this was cool because look at this. It's like a book. It is the Labyrinth book. Now, I don't know anything about this movie whatsoever. I do believe that I own a... I believe I own the DVD of this, and I was planning to watch it soon. Um... But yeah, this is, looks cool, man. I believe it's David Bowie. And um, is it uh, just a Jennifer Connelly, I believe? But it looks very, very cool. I mean, you know, I don't know. This is like witches and warlocks or something. I, I really don't know. I'm probably butchering that, but... It looks it looks really, really cool. And um, the, the, the presentation is there. I mean, we've had this conversation. No one ever understands why we collect physical media, right? This is why. This is why! Because I can do this and not push a button on a freaking remote. To me, this is this is cooler. I mean, I could just look on my shelf, you know, in the back and just point to what I want to watch for the day, you know, or the night or the whatever. But yeah, keep giving your physical media away, guys. We're going to buy it. <laughs> so those are my pickups. Thank you guys so much for indulging me. And uh, if you guys did enjoy some of these pickups or if you guys have seen some of these movies, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which one should I be checking out for the channel? Which one should I pass up on? You guys just let me know your thoughts. Please hit that big thumbs up to support the channel. Consider subscribing today. I do appreciate the support immensely. Click on all the links down in the description below. I will catch you guys in the next one. I'm gone. Peace.